Welcome to Modi Makes. What the heck? Sink. <laughs> Jeez. What's good, everybody? My name is Modi. This is Modi Makes, and today. We're gonna talk about character design. Because I often get asked this question that I'm sure all artists and creatives encounter regularly. How? How do you come up with these images? What's going on in your strange little mind to even consider these things? Well, <laughs> let me tell you, I don't know, okay? This is just how I am. Here's the truth, guys. Here's my little secret, my, my Coca-Cola secret formula. I just don't think about it too much. It doesn't so much come from my mind as it just comes out of me. Probably, probably could have chosen better words there. I don't really know how to explain this to you guys, so let me just show you. For me, the character is inseparable from the context they're contained in, so the setting is very important here. With that being said, the point of this painting is to show off the character and focus on the character design process. So we'll be keeping this background very minimalist in order to let our boy shine. With just a flat greenish blue. Easy one, two, three, hit him with the spray can and leave. Classic maneuver, we're just sticking to the fundamentals here. The next part is where you gotta keep your eyes why? Because we're actually getting into the meat of it. Combo the- <laughs> yeah. We'll combo the background slab with a little pokey poke slicey slice from the pencil to get our- God it. <laughs> so dumb. Uh, I can't even. We'll combo the background slab with a little pokey poke slicey slice from the pencil to get our sketch on there. And that's where the fun really starts. <laughs> Now it's no secret that I actually do my full design process ahead of time digitally, but that's not gonna stop me from confidently acting like I'm making this up as I go along. Besides, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Like I said in the beginning, my process is to not think about it too much, but it does get a little bit harder to pretend that once I start projecting a completed sketch on my canvas. But here, let me try anyways. After illuminating my canvas with this convenient directional studio light, I definitely sketch in a complete completely different design that just happens to be perfectly covered up by this projected design. You see, I just put this image here to throw you all off and make the reveal of the real painting even more surprising. Actually, the reason I do my full design process digitally and create a completed painting beforehand is for the very reason that I don't have to be precious with it. I just try stuff out and undo it and redo it until I make something that I like. Starting from a very vague idea and adapting in the moment, mostly based based on what I like composition. Also, I can make a basically invisible pencil sketch on my canvas for y'all. Now, wasn't that a satisfying payoff? All that nonsense to get the same blank canvas at the end? Well, I told you, you have to consider the reveal. I'm just drip feeding you it in stages to get that good itch. All right, maybe I shouldn't get too cocky or you'll just skip right to the end. But then you'd miss the part where I start breaking down my process and you actually might learn something there. Or not. Who knows? I make no promises outside of the fact that this painting is going to be pretty sick and it's extremely satisfying to watch me paint it. I watched a Doug Doug video recently where the entire video was just him downloading Microsoft Flight Simulator and the video ended once he was able to play the game. And this video was like 17 minutes long and I watched the whole dang thing. Once I finished it, I thought to myself how incredible that is that he can make a long format video about essentially nothing and I just ate that up. I mean, at least I worked really hard making a pretty picture and that's why I have literally one 2,269 Ninth, nice of his subscribers. Yay! Anyways, I needed something to fill up this section of me setting up my pens because I really liked the shots and wanted to keep them in. 
But let's talk about this character that I'm going to name Gary. Mostly because Gary gives me the visage of a goofy, happy-go-lucky goober type character, and that's exactly what I was going for. You see, like I had said before, I create my designs from very vague ideas. Because of this, it helps me to develop an iconic style that has specific visual language. The way that I create my pine trees or my speech bubbles are unique to my paintings and maintain a consistency to the world that I create. This iconic style style just takes time, practice, and dedication to craft, but it doesn't take any specific intention. I encourage creatives to create unhindered and try out tons of different things to see what they like and what truly represents their unique voice and form of expression. And as you iterate on that more and more, your style will develop and you create a unique visual language that you can pull from to make new images and characters that feel like they live in the same universe. When I started shaping Gary, I knew I wanted a happy character playing a trumpet while wearing a hat and a backpack and holding a flag, but that's it. So I started by drawing a trumpet, and then I created interesting shapes that worked well compositionally and had the general shape of the different elements I wanted to include. Then I just kept changing and working them until you could tell what they were, and they had maximum visual interest without being overworked. Then you can build up the scene around them to enhance the visuals of your character. The difference between my use of character design and what others' needs might be is that my characters live in a single image. I don't need to design character sheets or make them work in many poses and angles because they only need to work in a single painting. But that means that context is very important for me. If I had the wrong background color or scenery surrounding this character, then it wouldn't work. The composition as a whole has to be cohesive and interesting for my characters to shine. I know this might not all seem like it's very informational. I mean, I get that I'm basically just saying make stuff and figure it out. But that's really the point that I'm trying to get across. Don't worry about all this nonsense that's been built up around art and the artistic process. The rules are really more like guidelines. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. They're there to help you out if you're feeling stuck or you don't like your results. Art is really more of an art than a science. Who would have thunk it, huh? Take advice, but... <laughs> Take advice, but don't compromise on your own artistic vision in order. God. Take advice, but don't compromise on your own artistic vision in order to make it look like someone else's work. If there's a motto for this channel, then it's this, because I've said it many times before. The point of creating is to create something new. That's why I stopped working in realism and representationalism, because I didn't want to make things that you can see in the real world. I wanted to make things that you can't see anywhere else. But maybe you do, and that's totally fine. I said all this just to say, follow your inspiration, try new things, and experiment. If you follow someone else's path, then you'll just end up making their work. But if you follow your own path, you never know where you'll end up. And that's a little scary, yes, but it's also so exciting. So just keep making whatever you want. Speaking of that... The greatest example of all this gobbledygook I'm spouting that I can point to in my own work is my stippling shading. I only just started adding this to my style and it immediately enhanced the quality and beauty of my paintings by an order of magnitude. It definitely seems like I've gotten really far off track with the whole character design angle for this video, but I challenge you to see it differently. I'm trying to breathe life into my characters and that's exactly what all this depth and detail brings to my paintings. Life. Depth is used literally here to talk about the visual contrast of the image, but depth also invokes other ideas about personality. When depth is used to describe personal traits, it becomes synonymous with sophistication and the idea of having multiple layers and facets. This type of visual communication can help a viewer connect with a character, not only by giving them a more three-dimensional form and therefore more presence in the real world, but also by instilling these intangible, inherent inherent subconscious connections to complexity and personality. This also helps the character interact with the scene around them that builds up the different assumptions viewers will make about its meaning. By physically casting shadows and interweaving with various elements on the two-dimensional plane in different ways, we place the character within their personal context. This allows us to highlight or hide different facets of the design based on contrast and form guiding the thoughts of the viewer to your desired 
outcome. It also just helps to make some really cool and eye-catching stuff like reflections and ripples in a puddle that keep viewer engagement that some might call watch time. So you know, it doesn't all have to be so complicated. I mean, just for full transparency here, none of the stuff that I'm talking about was really factored in during the creation of this piece. I wasn't sitting there contemplating how all these esoteric, complicated interactions were taking place during the creation of Gary the Goofy Trumpeter. The cool thing about all the practicing and the just keep making stuff thing that I said before is the more complicated stuff just comes to you naturally and subconsciously, and then you're free to create unfettered. Remember, this is all just to say, don't don't think about it too much, don't worry, just make stuff. And if you think that I'm speaking in platitudes, then it really just makes my point. Don't worry about all the complicated, deep mumbo jumbo and just go with the second motto of the channel. Just make it good. No matter what you want to create, you can. That conveniently brings us to the final step in this character painting, the cleanup stage where I just make it good with the final black layer. For me, this is all about getting the cleanest, smoothest lines I can manage because that really does it for me. So I'm just gonna shut up for a little bit and we can all enjoy the satisfying part. Oh man, that's always such a nerve-wracking part because you just don't want to mess it up. But it's also my favorite part because it's just so satisfying and when you pull it off right, it's just a wonder to look at. Sorry, I just had to interject that real quick, but we're not quite done yet. The crowning final sparkly jewel that brings everything together in my painting process is the second layer of black stippling shading. This works hand in hand with the Just Make a Good model because it helps integrate the black line work in with the rest of the painting instead of it just sitting on top. It can also be used strategically in places where you feel that the line work isn't quite as clean as you'd like it to be by covering up a bit of the edge and smoothing it out. The main things I was interested in playing with in this image were the reflections and the drop shadows. I essentially wanted to make a landscape out of nothing with ridges, puddles, and foliage growing from the void. To help sell this effect and still make the ground feel tangible in the image, I used stark sharp drop shadows to span the gaps between distinct ground elements. The interesting thing about the human mind is that it will fill in the blanks for missing information as long as the correct signals are fired. And and you as the artist can manipulate that to create some very visually interesting results.
And finally, after all of that, I'll come back in and add a couple fine detail hatching lines and then my painting is complete and ready for those final shots. Well, there you have it, my peoples. My painting, Gary the Goofy Trumpeter, is complete. Let me know what you guys think of this piece down in the comments below. And let me know if you have any questions about this video or any other video I've made. I'll be happy to read through them all and respond to them personally, as I always do. And you know, if you like the video, go ahead and give me a like. That would be fantastic. And if you like me, you like the channel, and you want to help support me, the number one thing you can do is to subscribe. I really couldn't thank you enough if you did. It means the world to me. And with all that out of the way, and without further ado, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Oh my god. Why can't I snap right now? What is going on? There we go. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Thanks for watching.